Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. Thanks for joining me on this Good Friday. It sounds strange to call it good, doesn't it? When you think about that we are commemorating the crucifixion of the Son of God. And yet it is Good Friday. Let's talk about that on Something Deeper. When I heard there was only one sin that was unforgivable, I tried to figure out what that sin would be. And my first thought was it was murder. Then I realized God forgave murder. David himself was guilty of what amounted to murder. And yet God forgave him. And so I thought, well, maybe if you murder somebody who's innocent or somebody who is important. And then I realized Jesus was innocent and Jesus was important, the most important man who ever lived. And they murdered him, and Jesus still forgave them. So I, I never could figure that out. But I later realized it was blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which we'll talk about that another time. But this is such a monstrous crime that they killed Jesus, an innocent man who is actually the Son of God and the Creator of the world. And yet it is... Good Friday. Why is that? Well, let's go to Luke 23. And here in this passage, Jesus is carrying the cross to Golgotha, where he's to be crucified. They make him carry the instrument of his torture and death, and yet he collapses. And so they commandeer Simon of Cyrene, who I think Simon is named here because he was known to the early church. I think he probably became a believer, and there's some good evidence for that in the Bible. But they commandeer him to carry the cross, and Jesus is following along. And verse 27 tells a little story about what happened on the way. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? It's just like Jesus, isn't it, that even though he's going to his death and in a lot of pain, and he's exhausted. He's concerned about others. He sees these women who are wailing for him, and he said, don't cry for me, cry for yourselves. It was just a week before that that people were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem as a conquering king. And when he saw the city of Jerusalem, Jesus cried because he knew that they wanted a, a political king. They didn't want to sacrifice for their sins. They didn't want the real Jesus. They wanted their vision of Jesus, somebody to start a war. And he knew that there was a war coming. And all the people that he saw, most of them would be killed. Jesus was concerned for others, even when he was going to his death. And in reality, that's why he went to his death. <clears throat> they, they drove nails into his hands, and at the same time, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It seems hard to forgive somebody who's killing you at that moment. And yet, that's what Jesus was doing on the cross. He was dying as an innocent man for sinners. He took our penalty that we deserved when he didn't deserve it. So he said, weep for yourselves and for your children. And then he talked about the time when they would wish they'd never had children. Uh, because he said, it's gonna, there's going to be a terrible time coming when they say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. And then he gave this cryptic statement, for if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? I think he meant, if they do these things when I'm around, what will they do? When I'm gone. 
Here, the Savior of the world, the Creator of the universe, is right in front of them. And look at how they act. They torture and kill him. He says, if you think this is bad, wait till you see what they're going to do next. And it was about 40 years later that they started a revolution, and the people got what they wanted. They got a war. And it ended up with Jerusalem being burned and the people inside being killed. They wanted what they wanted, not what Jesus was offering. And yet what Jesus offered is so much better. And that's why we call this Good Friday, because he went to that cross willingly. He could have called 72,000 angels, but he didn't. He went to the cross willingly. He said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down. And he became our sacrifice so that now, now by his blood, we can be healed. By his death, we can live eternally. Because if we just put our faith in him and give our lives to him in submission, then he's promised that we will be saved, that our sins will be forgiven, and that we will be with him for eternity. God's pretty good at this, taking bad things and turning them into good things. On Good Friday, he took the worst thing that ever happened and he turned it into the best thing that ever happened for us. Let's pray. Father, we remember the most momentous moment in history when Jesus died on the cross and finished his work. Thank you, Father, for your sacrifice that gives us life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, happy Good Friday, everybody. I love you all. Take care, and we'll see you tomorrow night, Lord willing.